Okay, we're back. And just to recap what we did in number seven, when the absolute value is less than nine, that means you have to be within nine spaces of your point. So that's why you're gonna be shading between. Now in number eight, you'll notice it's the exact same inequality, or the exact same um, absolute value, and then the right side is the same. The only difference is now greater than or equal to. So now the distance has to be more than nine away. So what we're looking at, greater than or equal to, is an or problem. So I'm gonna set this up, positive case, 2x minus one, greater than or equal to nine, nothing changes, or 2x minus one, Here's the negative case. Now again, I'm changing this 9 to a negative 9. So I have to change my symbol to less than or equal to. So let's go ahead and solve it. We'll go plus 1. So 2x is less, or sorry, greater than or equal to 10. And then divide by 2. And we get x is greater than or equal to 5. Or plus 1. We get 2x is less than or equal to negative 8 divide by two, we get x is less than or equal to negative four. Okay, so x is greater than or equal to five. So on the number line, notice we get the same two values. Um, now first of all, since these are both greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, we're gonna close those circles. Greater than or equal to five goes to the right. Less than or equal to negative four goes to the left. So when you have an or problem, you're going to graph on either side. When you have an and problem, the value is going to be between. Okay? So that's the idea. Let's take a look at number 9. Absolute value of 2x plus 3 is less than 6. This is going to be an and problem. Okay, now, going back to number 7, you can set it up as two inequalities or we can go ahead and just make this one compound inequality, put all the pieces together. Now, the lower value will be negative six. Negative six, less than two x plus three, less than positive six. That's an and problem, you can do it like that. Okay, so I'm gonna draw the lines down. First thing we'll do is we'll subtract three from the middle, from the left, and from the right. So we get negative 9 less than 2x less than 3. Now that's 2 times x, so to undo that we'll divide by 2. And now you can leave it as a fraction or you can say negative 4.5 less than x less than 1.5. Notice that the x is between. So on the number line, negative 4.5, 1.5, now these are both going to be open, and again the x is between those values, so there's our solution set right there. If you ever have a question, you can always, you can always go ahead and um, plug a value in. So for example, let's say zero, that's part of this area that I shaded. If I put a zero in, does it make this true? Two times zero is zero, plus three is three. Is the absolute value of three less than six? Yes. So zero works. What if I picked a number to the right of this? What if I tried five, for example? Let's say I try five. So if I take a five and plug it in, two times five is 10, plus three is 13. Is the absolute value of 13 less than six? No. This whole section will not work. And then this section to the left will not work. The only section that's gonna work is right here, all these numbers between negative 4.5 and positive 1.5. All right, let's do two more. So we got number 10. Before you start doing cases, you gotta move all the numbers that are not in the absolute value to the other side. So first thing I'll do is I'm gonna move this minus nine, this constant, plus nine. So we get three times absolute value, 1 8th x plus 6, and that's going to be less than 24. 15 plus 9 is 24. Now, you've got options here. 
I could distribute the three and put it into the absolute value, but then that just makes numbers bigger for later on. I'm going to move the three right now. So that's three times the absolute value. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to divide both sides by three. Now when I do this, I'm going to reduce this first. Three divided by three is one. So what that leaves us is absolute value one eighth x plus six is less than 24 divided by three is eight. All right, so think about it. That's less than, absolute value less than. So is that gonna be and or is it going to be or? All right, remember the goal. Remember the goal. So greater than is or and is less than. So this is gonna be a less than problem. That means our answer is going to be between. So then when I set up my negative case, my negative case is negative eight, less than one eighth x plus six, less than positive case, okay? So that's how I'm combining it. Now, when we do that, we're gonna solve it. Our goal is to get the x by itself, so let's move the constant first, minus six, minus six, minus six, okay? Left side, middle, right side, do the same thing. Negative eight subtract six is negative 14. Less than, that's one eighth x, less than positive two. Now you got one more step here. Um, one eighth x is the same as x divided by eight. Okay, so I'm thinking of this as I'm dividing by eight right now. So to undo that, I'm gonna multiply by eight, each piece. I'm gonna multiply each piece by eight. So we get eight times negative 14 is negative 112. Less than, that'll just be x less than 16. Negative 112, less than x, less than 16. And that's gonna be the solution. Now, in terms of graphing it, you'll notice that when I do my number lines here, so there's zero. Negative 112, I just know it's on the left, okay? I don't care so much about, I'm not gonna number to negative 112, that'll take me forever. Here's 16. Ask yourself, open or closed, both of these are open, and let me put that in red. Where's the variable? The variable is between. So where am I gonna shade? I'm gonna shade between. Every number between these has to make this true. So if you wanna test it, if you wanna check it, for example, if I put, let's say zero, that's an easy number to check. If I put a zero back in here, one eighth times zero, that's just zero plus six, so that's six. So the absolute value of six is 18, I'm sorry, is six, times three is 18. 18 minus nine is nine. Is that less than 15? Check. Now if you try anything to the left of negative 112 or to the right of 16, it's not gonna make this true, okay? So remember the goal. Greater than is an or problem less than with absolute value, less than is an and problem where you're shading between. Okay, we got the last one here, number 11. Before we start doing our cases, let's move this minus two to the other side. We wanna get the absolute value by itself. So absolute value, three X minus five, greater than or equal to two. Okay, let's take a look at this absolute value greater than or equal to two. So remember the goal, greater than, that's an or problem. All right, so positive case, three X minus five greater than or equal to two, or negative case, three X minus five less than or equal to negative two. Okay, so the, again, when you do the negative case, you don't change the side with the absolute value. All you do is you change the sign on the other side, so that's negative two. And again, because it's an inequality, it's like multiplying by a negative, greater than or equal to becomes less than or equal to. So now we go ahead and solve it. So we'll add five, and then divide by three. Now you would get a decimal out of this, 
2.3 repeating, I'm going to leave it as 7 over 3. Or plus 5. So we get 3x less than or equal to 3. Now this one works out nicely. We get x is less than or equal to 1. All right, so we get our two values. Draw the number line. Here's 0. Let's see, here's 1, and then 7 thirds is to the right of that. Uh, let's see, ooh, this should be greater than or equal to. I don't want to make that mistake. Greater than or equal to 7 thirds. Closed circle because of the equal to part. Greater than means we're going to go to the right. Less than or equal to 1 is a closed circle. And we're going to go to the left. And that is the end of the notes.